When we discuss rocket development, the focus often lands on the engineering and technological aspects, but there's much more to it. An often overlooked but crucial factor is the location where the rocket is being produced. Selecting a site for a rocket factory is a complex task that involves more than just finding a large enough space. It requires navigating logistical challenges, environmental regulations, and community relations. The site must be strategically located to allow for efficient transportation, testing, and compliance with environmental standards. SpaceX, for instance, is currently grappling with these very issues. Having previously chosen a bad location, they are now facing the consequences of that decision. However, Musk is moving the operation to an entirely new state, indicating a complete change in location. Although late, it's better than never. Before we delve deep into this development, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about the developments around the space world, especially SpaceX. SpaceX's move from Delaware to Texas reflects Musk's strategic response to legal challenge. The trigger was a Delaware judge ruling against Musk's $56 billion compensation package at Tesla, highlighting potential legal and regulatory hurdles in the state, known for its corporate-friendly laws but also for its stringent oversight. Musk's preference for Texas over Delaware follows this adverse legal outcome, suggesting he views Texas as offering a more favorable environment for his companies. This perception could be due to Texas's regulatory framework, which might be seen as more lenient or supportive of business innovations and expansions compared to Delaware's more established but possibly more scrutinizing legal system. Texas has become a hub for tech and innovation, partly due to policies that encourage investment and development. However, it is unfortunate that companies in the United States sometimes are pushed to change their locations due to tough legal challenges. Meanwhile, countries with more flexible regulations are making rapid advancements and challenging U.S. dominance in key industries. China, for example, has been advancing aggressively in the space sector without facing the same internal state-by-state -state regulatory challenges that U.S. companies sometimes encounter. For instance, a Chinese company successfully tested a rocket that can land back after launch, marking a crucial step towards reusability much like what SpaceX has achieved with its Falcon 9 rocket. China is developing the Long March 9 rocket, a heavy-lift vehicle aimed at competing with SpaceX's Starship. The Long March 9 is expected to have its inaugural launch around 2030, significantly enhancing China's ability to conduct deep space missions. This competition is a key reason why SpaceX is intensifying its efforts, including relocating operations to Texas. Moreover, Texas offers a favorable business climate, including no state income tax, which could offer financial advantages to companies and their employees alike. Moreover, the state has been supportive of SpaceX's ambitions, particularly in the development of its Boca Chica launch site, now known as Starbase, which is crucial for the company's Starship project. It's good that SpaceX does not solely focus on launching rockets, which could complicate such strategic moves, like changing their operational location. Instead, SpaceX is one of the largest satellite providers globally through its Starlink project. With over 5,289 satellites in orbit as of early 2024, Starlink provides coverage to more than 70 countries and has plans to extend its constellation to potentially 42,000 satellites. This vast network has allowed SpaceX to reach a milestone of 2 million subscribers by now. And recently, SpaceX has announced plans to perform controlled deorbit of approximately 100 early version 1 Starlink satellites due to concerns over potential future failures. Although these satellites are effectively serving users, SpaceX's internal review identified a common issue within this subset that could heighten the risk of malfunction. With a total of 5,438 Starlink satellites in orbit, out of 5,828 launched, the focus is on the oldest satellites deployed in 2019 and 2020. These early satellites lack the sun visors present in later models, designed to minimize sunlight reflection and reduce their visibility from Earth. Out of the initial batch of 420 Version 1 satellites, 337 remain in orbit. The deorbiting process for the satellites in question will be gradual, taking place over about six months. 
the expansion of the Starlink constellation, which is the largest in orbit, has sparked discussions on space traffic management and the sustainability of space activities. There's a growing call for new regulations to manage satellite and debris growth and to ensure that satellites are deorbited promptly at the end of their service life. SpaceX uses the Falcon 9 rocket to launch its Starlink satellites into orbit. The Falcon 9 is known for its reliability and the capability to reuse its first stage, which lands back on Earth after launch. Typically, a single Falcon 9 launch can deploy around 60 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. To reach the goal of 42,000 satellites, SpaceX plans to use the Starship, which can carry more satellites per launch than Falcon 9. Speaking of the Starship, the spacecraft represents a significant leap towards making interplanetary travel a reality. Designed to be fully reusable, Starship aims to carry both crew and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond, with a payload capacity that dwarfs existing launch vehicles. The upcoming third test flight of Starship is set for February, as SpaceX works diligently to address the challenges identified in its second test flight, showcasing their commitment to refining and perfecting the spacecraft's performance. Starship's design and capabilities are groundbreaking. With a height of 120 meters and powered by Raptor engines, it's the world's most powerful launch vehicle ever developed, capable of carrying up to 150 metric tons in a fully reusable configuration. The operational capabilities of Starship extend to its innovative approach to refueling in orbit, a critical component for long-duration missions. SpaceX's plans involve launching a propellant depot into stable orbit, followed by a series of tanker Starships to fill the depot. This method will be pivotal for the Artemis missions, enabling the Starship Moonlander to undertake its journey to the lunar surface and back, highlighting SpaceX's role in returning astronauts to the Moon for the first time in 50 years. However, Musk envisions launching 1,000 starships to colonize Mars, a goal that requires an unprecedented scale of infrastructure development. The current focus on streamlining Starship's testing and launch process, as evidenced by the pre-flight preparations for Ship 28 and Booster 10, is a step towards this future. These efforts underscore the necessity of a machine to build the machine. Yet achieving the goal of interplanetary colonization with Starship involves significant challenges, including the need for additional launch sites beyond Starbase to manage the envisioned launch frequency. The complex logistics of orbital refueling, coupled with the scale of operations required for Musk's vision, present a formidable set of hurdles. Nevertheless, SpaceX's progress and iterative approach to testing and development reflect a clear trajectory towards overcoming these obstacles and realizing the dream of making humanity a multi-planetary species. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.